Bob Arum did this interview with IFL TV. And in it, he said that Errol Spence, according to his uh, inside information, will not be back in the ring for the foreseeable future. Or in the foreseeable future, should I say. Now, there's a lot of hearsay when it comes to Errol Spence. PBC have said, oh, he's going to be back in the ring in spring and all this kind of stuff. But the bottom line is, if Errol Spence is okay and he's going to get back in the ring, why has this guy not done any interviews since his accident? Where is this guy? Because there's been pictures of him standing up a couple, a couple times in Instagram photos. So he's out and about and he's walking around. Why is he not doing interviews with people? No interviews with the press, no interview with, with local you know, television in terms of him being on camera, no interviews with any of the YouTube channels. Where is Errol Spence? Why is he hiding away from media attention? What's going on? The fact that it's radio silence from Spence leads me to strongly suspect that his injuries were far more serious than PBC are leading us to believe. And this is something that Rick Glazer said, actually. I know Rick Glazer gets a lot of heat from the PBC guys, and let's be real, Rick Glazer doesn't like Al Heyman. Okay, that's something I've come to discover over the past few weeks. This really is an anti-Heyman guy. So let's be fair about it. But it doesn't mean that everything he says about Heyman or Heyman fighters is untrue, right? We all have people we don't like, but it doesn't mean everything we say about them is untrue, right? And with regards to what he said about Errol Spence, he said that PBC were covering up the true extent of Spence's injuries. I suspect that he's telling the truth. I suspect he's right. And Bob Barham, of course, who knows Rick Glazer, is suggesting something similar. Now, I watched the video on the Boxing Voice YouTube channel a few weeks ago, and they showed one of these photos of Errol Spence uh, since the accident. And he was standing with these two guys, and he was holding one of his fists up. I think it was his, was it his left fist he was holding up? I can't remember if he was left, his left or his right, but sometimes uh, when people take pictures, depending on which camera they use on their smartphone, it can actually invert the picture. So God knows which hand it was. But one of Errol Spence's hands was down by his pocket, okay? And it was kind of murky and, you know, a little bit blurry. So you, could, you couldn't see it properly. But on the boxing voice, they zoomed in to one of Errol Spence's hands. And people, <laughs> I hope it was a trick of the light. Or he had a handkerchief in his hand or it was something else. Because the way it looked in that picture, his hand was all types of jacked up. Like it, his hand looked crazy in that picture. It looked like it was crispy crittered. Do you know what I mean? Like his hand looked like somebody had put it on a barbecue. That's what it looked like in that picture. Again, hopefully it was just a trick of the light, but this, this guy's hand looked like Dr. No from James Bond. It looked like one of them screw on hands. You know, like a metal hand you screw on? Dr. No from James Bond. You remember the old school movie? Look, this is Dr. No. Got metal hands, right? That's how Errol Spence is looking like Captain Hook out here. Flipping screw on utensils for hands. That's what his hand looked like, people. Hopefully that's not his real hand. It was a trick of the light. Um, but again, the radio silence from Team Spence, no interviews from this guy, nothing, leads me to suspect that all is not well. There was also an Instagram post, I think it was, or was it Snapchat? One of those um, from Errol Spence shortly after the crash where he, he said something like dark clouds or, you know, he left some kind of cryptic message on social media shortly afterwards. And there were those rumors going around in the immediate aftermath of the crash that he was going to have to have an arm amputated or something like that. So was it not so much an arm, maybe a hand that was seriously injured or God knows, uh, is it possible that his hand or one of his hands is very, very badly injured and they're having to reconstruct his hand and do skin grafts and bone grafts and all that kind of stuff? Who knows, man, we can only speculate, but Again, I, I suspect that there's something amiss there. That, that, that Errol Spence is not as uh, unscathed as PBC made him out to be. But we'll see. You know, it's a shame because, truth be told, Errol Spence was one of my favorite fighters for many years. From when he first turned pro 
the stuff I was hearing about this guy out of the gyms, the way he was going about his business in the ring, he seemed like he was all business. You know, he wasn't all flashy and this, that, or the other. He was just all about fighting like a old school spit and sawdust type boxer. I compared him to Marvin Hagler in videos, you know, a couple years back in terms of his attitude, you know, no nonsense and a similar kind of style in some ways to Hagler. But then after he beat Kell Brook, and I, in fact, I remember going into the Brook fight, I picked him to beat Brook. I took a lot of heat from British boxing fans for being so big on Errol Spence, you know, because I was always making videos about Spence and saying how good he was and how I like his attitude. And then after bigging up Spence for all this time, then I was picking him to beat Brook. And, you know, the British fans didn't like it at all. Um, and, and, and I was kind of arguing with a lot of Kell Brook fans as well after the fight. And they were all blaming it on Brook being weight drained. And I'm like, come on, man, that's all excuses. Errol Spence went to Brook's backyard. You know, he's dealing with all the jet lag. He's dealing with the different environment because he's from Texas. It's hot. And he's going to Sheffield where it's cold. Different environment, different atmosphere, hostile crowd. He had to put up with a lot as well. Who's to say that Errol Spence was at his best against Kell Brook? You know, so these are the kind of arguments I was having with, with uh, a lot of British Kell Brook fans at the time. So yeah, I was, I was big on Errol Spence. I really liked him as a fighter. But after the Brook fight, it all started going downhill. Gradually, he started getting sucked into this PBC culture. And he was hanging around with people like Broner and Tank Davis and turning up to press conferences drunk. And oh, no, he, he started getting real sloppy. And then, of course, there are other people out there, you know, rivals of his who are coming out on social media saying, yeah, Spence is a drunk and this, that and the other. And turns out he is. He has a drinking problem and that side of him. And let, let me not say he's got a drinking problem. As, you know, I don't know whether he wakes up with a <laughs> you know, bottle of vodka next to his bed and starts drinking immediately, you know, pouring <laughs> whiskey on his cornflakes. I'm not saying it's that deep, but for a professional athlete to be out in the clubs getting wavy and stuff like that, you know, it's not a good look. It's not a good look at all. And I made videos about this. And of course, there were haters, PBC people in the comments saying, oh, let him do what he's doing. It's not going to hurt him and this, that, and the other. Well, are you sure about that? Because Errol Spence's career might be over. You know, he nearly lost his life because he was going down that path of the foolishness, the ratchetness, the rat out in the clubs and partying it up and hanging around with that type of crowd. He nearly lost his life because of that. So who was right and who was wrong? I was right and those guys were wrong trying to defend what Spence was doing. Nah, man. Not a good idea to be going down them, them roads um, if you're looking to be a top-level professional fighter. So, yeah, we'll see what happens here, people, but it's unlikely that Spence is going to be back in the foreseeable future, according to Bob Arum, and therefore he's not even entertaining the talk of Terence Crawford anymore because, you know, Spence, we don't know if he's going to be the same ever again or if, re if he'll return to the ring. So... We'll see. Hopefully we get some kind of video or something from Spence sometime soon, but I ain't holding my breath. And if Spence is AWOL from boxing for some time, can Terence Crawford target somebody else in PBC instead? Maybe target Manny Pacquiao. He's always wanted that fight. Uh, even when Pacquiao was with top rank, he wanted that fight. Pacquiao, uh, Danny Garcia, who else is there now? Sean Porter. I could target one of the PBC guys. Furman. We, we don't know what Furman's doing. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about everything I talked about in this video. It's happening. I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up 
There's no contract and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.